Well, hey guys, get excited because in this video, we're gonna go over active ingredients that you can use alongside your retinol. This is one of the most popular sets of questions I get across all of my social media platforms. So we're gonna do a deep dive into skincare actives that can be used alongside retinol. But before we do all of that, make sure you are subscribed if you like skincare content from a board certified dermatologist and turn the little bell icon on. By hitting that bell notification, YouTube will let you know as soon as my videos go live. Retinol is a broad category, lots of different subtypes. We're not gonna get into the differences in this video, but the benefit of these ingredients is that they help normalize skin cell turnover and they help to remove sun damage. If you've ever used one of these ingredients, however, you know that in the beginning, they can be pretty irritating. A lot of people simply don't tolerate them for this reason. If you watched any of my videos on how to introduce a retinol, I recommend starting slow and going slow and being very patient, just using them once a week, then bumping up to every other night, and then nightly as tolerated. And they take time to work at least six weeks, if not three months, and you continue to see more benefit the longer that you stay consistent with them. Because retinols can be so irritating and they can make your skin a little bit more sensitive in the beginning, it can be tricky to navigate skincare actives and know which ingredients are okay to use alongside retinol. First of all, just taking a step back, your skincare routine overall absolutely needs to include a sunscreen. When we're talking about reaping the benefits of a retinol, it's going to be magnitudes greater if you are using it alongside sun protection. Using your retinol with sunscreen is going to help enhance the rate at which it clears up hyperpigmentation because sunscreen is going to put the brakes on further upregulation of any hyperpigmentation. A sunscreen is also going to help protect against the UV rays that generate a lot of inflammation and further break down collagen. So they're a really nice pairing, an absolute must. In terms of other popular over-the-counter anti-aging type ingredients, I would say niacinamide is definitely one that certainly can safely be used with actually pretty much any ingredient, but specifically when we're talking about pairing it with retinol, it's a nice pairing because niacinamide is an antioxidant. So it can do some damage control against environmental stressors. You know, when you go out, you're exposed to UV, pollution, uh, infrared, red radiation, all that generates free radicals in the skin that can damage collagen, protein, lipids in our skin, contribute to the aging process. An antioxidant like niacinamide can help do some damage control against some of that. Niacinamide is also beneficial for oiliness. So if you're using a retinoid or retinol for like acne control, the niacinamide, there is some evidence, can likewise be beneficial for at least acne. Niacinamide also helps with the strength of the moisture barrier, and it may help you to tolerate the irritating side effects of retinol. Niacinamide is commonly found in moisturizers, anti-aging products. You don't necessarily need a separate niacinamide serum. And if anything, you know, trying to go out and find a separate product, if anything, it can complicate your routine too much. But niacinamide certainly can be safely used alongside retinol, provided you tolerate it. Some people simply don't tolerate niacinamide. Another family of anti-aging ingredients is going to be copper peptides or peptides. Certainly fine to use those alongside your retinol uh, at the same time if that's your routine or you can use them the following morning. It really doesn't matter, again, provided you tolerate them. To what extent peptides really do much in skincare? There is some evidence that maybe they help with facilitating barrier repair depending on the peptide. Perhaps they may help with reducing pigment production upon exposure to environmental stressors. Perhaps they may help with collagen synthesis, collagen repair, but you know they're not the most robustly researched searched ingredients. If anything, they help improve the moisture content of the skin because they hold on to water. Ultimately, that can help you tolerate the dryness and irritation that comes alongside using a retinol. Then we have the ever so popular vitamin C. There are so many forms of vitamin C out there. Y'all know my opinion on vitamin C serums. I think the vast majority of them on the market don't do anything. Vitamin C, specifically ascorbic acid, is a tricky ingredient to formulate so that it actually gets into the skin, so that it actually stays is stable enough in the bottle to even have a fighting chance to, to do anything. There's so much variability. Now there are of course uh, stabilized derivatives um, that have to be converted in your skin to ascorbic acid. Whether or not that happens is again 
a big unknown. Regardless, they're popular ingredients, uh, whether it be ascorbic acid or some derivative like magnesium ascorbyl phosphate. All in all, yes, you absolutely can use them alongside retinol, and they may in fact be a nice pairing along with your retinol. Typically, it's advised to use the retinol in your nighttime routine and the vitamin C in the morning, but honestly, there is no wrong way to do it. The goal with the vitamin C is it's an antioxidant. It's going to, again, exert some damage control against those environmental stressors that lead to free radicals that would otherwise damage our skin. And it also can help improve hyperpigmentation. There is some evidence that ascorbic acid, at least, provided it gets into the skin, can help with collagen production. So that's gonna complement the effects of the retinol nicely. In theory, they are a really nice pairing. There's no issue with using them together. I would say the one caveat, or at least thing to, something to be aware of is that at least in the case of ascorbic acid, it is uh, you know reputable brands that formulate ascorbic acid. The, the formulation is typically pretty acidic, which can be a little irritating for people. I, I find it irritating for myself personally. Some people tolerate it again just fine. There's a lot of person-to-person -person variability. But all that to say, it may make your skin a little bit more sensitive, especially if you are new to the retinol and you're still getting some dryness and peeling, but otherwise they are fine to use alongside one another. Azelaic acid is a treatment for acne, hyperpigmentation, and rosacea. It's typically very well tolerated. However, it can be a touch drying. As an ingredient, it's anti-inflammatory. It also helps limit hyperpigmentation. Azelaic acid also helps uh, ever so slightly, very gently exfoliate the skin so it can have a skin smoothing effect and it can help with redness and rosacea. And it is more than fine to use alongside your retinol. It's not going to inactivate it. While it can be a bit drying, it doesn't typically make people more sensitive. Uh, a lot of people with rosacea actually do end up using tretinoin with no issue. And it is it has a track record of being beneficial for improving the papules and pustules of rosacea paired with azelaic acid that together you know they're going to exhibit some synergy in controlling issues related to rosacea likewise if you have acne maybe you're using over-the-counter adapalene or you're using a prescription retinoid paired with a azelaic acid they're going to complement one another azelaic acid is antibacterial as well so it can help with breakouts related to the acne causing bacteria, cutibacterium acnes. And if you're somebody who gets acne that heals with hyperpigmentation, which is pretty common, the azelaic acid can not only help add some additional support for breakout prevention and clearing breakouts, but it also can help reduce the chances that your breakout heals with hyperpigmentation and it can help with clearing existing hyperpigmentation. A lot of people acquire sunspots that they are seeking to fade. There's a good chance that pairing can get you the results you may be looking for. Hydroquinone. Now hydroquinone inhibits that enzyme tyrosinase. It is the gold standard for any kind of hyperpigmentation treatment. It works really well. It requires a prescription and it's best when used under the supervision of your treating dermatologist. It used to be sold over the counter and a lot of people safely used it at the over the counter strengths. Because of the CARES Act, it's no longer sold here in the US over the counter and it's not sold over the counter in most countries. There is a long standing track record of pairing hydroquinone with tretinoin. They actually are a great team when it comes to fading hyperpigmentation because the tretinoin actually can help stabilize hydroquinone and tretinoin because it increases, uh, it improves cell turnover. It's gonna hasten the clearance of hyperpigmentation. So you're gonna see results in terms of improving your discoloration faster when tretinoin is on board. It can also enhance the penetration of hydroquinone into the skin, improving results as well. In fact, there is a prescription treatment called Triluma, which pairs hydroquinone and tretinoin together so they can tag team and really help fade your hyperpigmentation along with a low uh, potency steroid. Uh, they're all together in one, one product so that you don't have to apply three different things. And the low potency steroid helps to suppress not only pigment production, but it also helps to suppress inflammation that may be triggered from irritating side effects and that inflammation can actually worsen hyperpigmentation. So the anti-inflammatory piece is helpful. If you've been prescribed hydroquinone and tretinoin, how do you use them? Best to discuss with your treating doctor how to use those two together. It's, you know, it will depend on what it is that you're seeking to treat. 
and a lot of times your doctor is probably going to prescribe you instead that Triluma where you have everything in one. But suffice it to say, yes, these two ingredients have a long-standing track record of being paired up to, one, to together uh, to get better control of the hyperpigmentation than either ingredient alone. Tretinoin and clindamycin. Now clindamycin is a topical antibiotic. It's also an oral antibiotic, but for acne, we use a topical antibiotic clindamycin, a decent amount, and it helps to minimize breakouts. And it also is anti-inflammatory. However, there is an issue with clindam topical clindamycin. We don't like to use it indefinitely, because it is an antibiotic, there is a risk that the bacteria on your skin will become resistant to it. Uh, and therefore, we try and limit the duration of use. But it can be paired with tretinoin, and in fact, that is a nice pairing because the goal with topical clindamycin is as a shorter term treatment. It gets you results fast, you know, it clears the acne up a little bit faster. Tretinoin, again, takes some time to work, or adapalene, another acne retinoid. They, those take some time to work. So by starting them together, the retinoid has time to start working, the clindamycin is gonna help calm everything down, and then you can be weaned off of the clindamycin at a time when the retinoid has had enough time to start working. So they actually can be used together and often are. But that's for acne. Uh, people who are using a retinoid for an anti-aging purpose should not be using clindamycin. It's, you know, it's not, it's not going to, it only puts you at risk of bacterial resistance, which is not a good thing. It's not doing you any, any favors in there. But for acne, it certainly can be beneficial in the short term. All right, next is tretinoin and cilantro. Cilantro is the brand name of topical ivermectin. I have a video all about this drug and it is a treatment for rosacea. It's a rosacea treatment. We don't know exactly how it works for rosacea, but the going theory is that in rosacea, uh, the little demodex mites, which we all have in our skin, but in rosacea, those little mites are, are a little bit more prolific and they're like likely are playing a major role in rosacea. Topical ivermectin, cilantro, helps to reduce the burden of those little mites, and that's how it's thought to exert control in rosacea. It's also anti-inflammatory, which is beneficial for rosacea. You know, it's a myth that people who have rosacea cannot use topical retinoids. That's, that's a myth. They certainly can. They have a, a more challenging time getting used to them, uh, getting to a point where they can tolerate them but they certainly can and they do benefit from using these. Long term, it can actually help strengthen the health of the skin barrier and that's really helpful for rosacea because people with rosacea, they're exquisitely sensitive to things that come in contact with the skin. By having that improved barrier function, it really can help. And prescription retinoids can help uh, reduce the burden of uh, bumps related to rosacea. Cilantro is meant to be applied once a day in a thin film. Talk to your doctor though about how they want you to use it, but it's, it's not going to counteract the effects of the retinol if used at the same time. Plascaterone, which goes by the brand name Winleavy. I have a whole video on this, by the way, definitely check it out, but Winleavy, is a medication that uh, blocks the androgen receptor. And the androgen receptor in the skin is really what drives acne uh, in a lot of people, uh, both men and women, because it leads to more oiliness and it increases the proliferation of the cells that line the core. Clascoterone blocks the signaling of the, uh, the male hormones to that receptor. Uh, and it, the nice thing about Clascoterone, brand name Winleavy, is it just stays in the skin. It's not absorbed into the body. For this reason, both men and women can use it safely. There's no risk if a, if a male uses it that it's gonna be absorbed in the body and block the effects of testosterone. Nothing like that, just localized to the skin. It's a newer drug. However, it's not the kind of medication that is typically enough by itself. And oftentimes it is likely something that's going to be prescribed to you to complement something else like a prescription retinoid or the over-the-counter adapalene. Because retinoids, while they are fantastic for acne, they don't address the hormonal component. So this pairing makes sense and likely it will work for some people with acne, not everyone. There's no one size fits all approach, but this pairing makes sense and is something that 
you may be put on, if you have acne, salicylic acid. Now salicylic acid is an over-the-counter acne treatment. It's FDA approved for acne. Because salicylic acid can be drying, it's typically advised to apply the salicylic acid in the morning and the tretinoin at nighttime because the two together can just be too irritating. If you are using a salicylic acid cleanser or wash, then it doesn't matter. Um, it, it typically doesn't matter. Again, it'll vary from person to person, but provided you tolerate it, uh, it typically doesn't matter. Uh, you can use a wash and it's not as likely to be too, too drying and irritating. Again, there's no one size fits all, but specifically for people with acne, this is a nice pairing. Salicylic acid loves the pore, the oily surfaces of the skin, and it can help normalize the pore lining. It's anti-inflammatory, so it augments the benefits of a topical retinoid. All right, so those are the main active ingredients that can augment the effects of your prescription retinol or retinoid or complement them, perhaps get you to a certain point faster in your skin journey. When it comes to skincare, it's not a one size fits all approach and everyone's relative sensitivity to ingredients varies a lot. And some people just don't tolerate all of these actives. Across the board to a general audience, I always caution trying to introduce too much too complicated of a routine. If it's a prescription treatment, follow very closely with your dermatologist because they're going to be able to tailor the treatment to you and what it is that you're aiming to treat, whether it be acne, melasma, they're, they're the ones that need to be answering the questions. But generally speaking, these ingredients that I've mentioned here, they can be safely used along with retinol, including the prescription stuff, provided you tolerate the combinations. And because many of these ingredients can be drying and irritating, make sure you are using them alongside rich moisturizers, moisturizing creams, and of course, sunscreen. All right, y'all, I hope this was helpful. You know, it can be a tricky area to navigate. And uh, a lot of people end up introducing too much all at once, getting very irritated, and then they get overwhelmed, frustrated. So I hope this simplified it for you guys in terms of some of the more common active ingredients. But at the end of the day, keep the routine simple. And if you have questions, if you have an actual skin problem, definitely see a board certified dermatologist for evaluation and treatment. Make sure you are on the right path and uh, don't try and DIY things yourself. Now on the end slate, I'm going to put my video, uh, my recent video on the benefits of using alpha hydroxy acids. So check that one out next. But if you guys like this, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.